Hello. Hey, Tim. Um, <laughs> let's see here. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good this morning, man. Everything's going all right. I guess so. Um, I guess I could start off just asking the questions I had, and then I'll let you just wrap it up or finish whatever to teach. So I guess another one of my questions I have now is how do you use your uh, my house deals? Uh, since you know, majority of those deals get uh, they're gone so quick. Yeah, um, the deal doesn't matter. It's the relationship with the wholesalers that matters. And that's exactly what I pulled from, and that's what I thought too, Tim. Okay, that 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 that's that's answered just real quickly. Okay, yeah, I I, I figured that just the relationship with the wholesalers. Right. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So you know, you yeah, you want to be where. They contact you, you know, as soon as they have a deal, right? Okay. Um, and um, all of these wholesalers are gonna run into deals that they have a hard time to sell. Okay. And and when that happens, um, you know, they yeah, they they will look they will look to, you know, um, yeah, like people who have strong buyers list that might go to find a buyer that they can't find. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah. Great. great. All right. Yeah, that's just part of the business. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. So, and then uh, another question I had is uh, on my house deals, they have a private lender uh, like tab or search or where they give you a list of numbers. Um, and I also have uh, FreedomSoft set up. I want to direct Ashley to put those text blast in there and so she won't have to do it manually it's taking her too long right. to uh, get some of this stuff done yeah. uh, so I was thinking could I insert those private lenders numbers into like Freedom Soft and send them a text about uh, you know would you like to receive 10% return uh, ROI on your on your money based on it like back by an asset could I send them like a text blast? Uh, not like that. Uh, you can send them a text blast, but only to build relationship, not offering any kind of interest. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. all in your relationship. Yeah, yeah. This, you know, the, the bulk of what you do as a business owner is all relationships. Like, you know, relationships with the people that you can have repeat business with. Right. If there if there are people that you're not gonna have repeat business with, like a homeowner, then building that relationship is not as important. But wholesalers, private lenders, rehabbers, landlords, you know, those people, it's very important that you build a long term relationship with them. Right. Yeah. And um most, you know, most private lenders on my house deals are not um they're not really legit lenders. They're, they're, they're hard money lenders. There's, um, you know, a broker wannabe. There's, so, so there's a lot of, like, if you see anything that says, you know, they lend nationally, you can ignore all of those. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, uh, or if they say they have like a million dollars to lend, you can ignore those as well. Okay. So, so the ones that focus in on are people only lend, in, in your city and that like they have a small amount of money, even if they say they only have 10,000, 50,000, those are a lot more legit than the ones that say they have 500,000 or more. Okay. 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 Great. 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 Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, a lot of times with these people, you know, they, they say that they only have 10,000 to lend, but once you do some deals with them and once they get to know you more, they have more money elsewhere to lend. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, and so, so yeah, but, um, uh, but yeah, t you know, typically local, under 500,000, those are gonna be your best people. But yeah, you know, yeah. All the other ones you can, you can just ignore them or delete them. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Great. Great. All right. And so, yeah, no, that's, uh, I, I think that's it for now for me.
uh, as far as questions. Okay, all right, that sounds good. All right, we're gonna go through the the matrix MLS now. Yeah. Uh, let me um, let me actually. So I'll, I'll I'll go through the steps and then I'll you know I'll go into your MLS and you give me a property, um, and then we'll start there. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, so you know, step one obviously is to log in. <laughs> so that's step one. Enough. Um, step two, I like to always search for the property address first. Okay. Because um, I want to see has this property ever been listed on the MLS? Okay. Okay. Right? Um, you know, and and of course, if, if we're making offers on the MLS, then for sure that property <laughs> is listed on the MLS, right? All right. Um, and you know, I want to see chips check for history this is so critical because i want to see how long have they been trying to sell this house how many times they've been trying to sell it um how much you know um because sometimes you wonder it's like man they have it listed at a good price why haven't they sold it yet like what has been going on right um, and looking at the history can give you a big picture can tell you you know even like uh how much they bought it for and things like that okay um, and then, um, you know, while you're at it, you can also look at the, the subdivision name so that way you can run comps on it. Um, and then if, if the property is not listed on the MOS, um, just, then you're going to click on the, uh, the, the real list, uh, public records to search that property so you can get all the info on it. Uh, you know, name of the subdivision, bedroom, bathroom, square feet, lot size, year built. Okay. Uh, you know, all of these things are important. Uh, so that way we can, we can compare um, to the, the other properties when we're running them. Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, step three um, is to put in the, uh, the, the, we, we always want within the last six months, uh, if possible, uh -huh. and uh, and and if we can't find pro, you know comps within the last six months, then we go out to a year. Um, and if we can't find within a year, then we'll you know we'll go out of that subdivision into map. But I prefer to find in the same subdivision within a year as much as possible. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because it gives us a more accurate picture than than the map search. But as far as an appraiser is concerned. Uh, an appraiser will, will always stay within the last six months and they'll use a map search to go on beyond that subdivision. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do that over going older than six months. All right. Um, and then, I, you know, um, I, I always like to put the zip code in just in case the subdivision we're searching for, like there's a there's another subdivision with that same name in some other area, uh -huh. you know, because sometimes that happens. And so, uh, just as a practice, just put in the zip code, um, and then um, you know, I, you you want to find uh, ideally you have at least three comps, but even if you have two, because we're doing wholesaling, uh -huh. you know, most of what we do is we guesstimate what you know what we can get for the property right. um, but um but yeah if we can find at least you know two to four comps um you know that that would be great uh the more the better uh, um, so that way we can get more accurate data um and then um you know i uh also look at the maps to make sure that the um you know that that the comps is not um like it doesn't cross a freeway it doesn't cross any like major intersection some neighborhood I've had it where it looks like you know it was an older neighborhood, and then somewhere along the line, the you know the 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 city put a freeway through that neighborhood. So you have you have the exact same neighborhood, but if they were on one side of the freeway, there was like say you know two hundred thousand, but because they're on the other side of the freeway, they only worth a hundred thousand. Uh -huh. uh -huh. You know, so you want to you want to be able to catch stuff like that. Or sometimes like in a transitional neighborhood, you know, you cross one street and it's like a huge difference in price. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've experienced that before. Yeah. So, so, so it's important to look at the map 
um, so you can see, you know, uh, what you're looking at. Um, and then, you know, uh, at the end of the day, you always look at, okay, what, what do you think the, the average dollar per square is, um, and, you know, to calculate and multiply it up. And, you know, and, and, and also too, like, you know, look at um, what, what is the price range in that neighborhood? You know, what can this neighborhood support? So for example, I have a house right now uh, that we just got in the contract where it's, it's much bigger than the rest of the house. Majority of the comps are around 15 to 1800 square feet. But my house is 2,500 square feet. So if I use dollar per square, then my house is going to be way more expensive than what the going price is for the neighborhood. Yeah, absolutely. Uh -huh. Yeah. So like, you know, the most the neighborhood ever been sold for is only 130 something thousand bucks. Wow. Right? Uh -huh. But it's a much smaller house. It's like a thousand square feet smaller than ours. Uh -huh. So in, 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 in our house, just, to, just kind of like a best guess, you know, I'm estimating that, uh, it's probably worth between 180 to 200. Okay. So, so, um, you know, so, so, uh, so you, you want to look at all of that. You want to look at what is, you know, what is the average dollar per square that's closest to our property and what is the most a neighborhood can bring and what's the least a neighborhood. I'll give you an, another example. It's a house that we're, we're, we have sold and we're closing on it tomorrow where it's the opposite, right? The, the comps that were sold were bigger than my house. Oh. Um, and, you know, and, and um, um, so let's say it's, uh, it's 400, no, 300 square feet bigger uh, that sold for like 130 something. Um, and so, so I'm thinking that I, you know, a, a buyer that buys mine like mine is only a thousand square feet versus 1300 square feet. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, you know, a, a buyer that, that, you know, uh, if you do dollar per square feet, then, then my house would only calculate to be like $96,000. Right. Right. Uh -huh. But, but, you know, I bet that if, if I was to buy it and fix it up nicely and retail it, uh -huh. I would try to sell it for 120. Uh -huh. Right, because other houses in the neighborhood sold for more than that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so 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 it's it's uh it's, you know, I mean, if you're not sure, you're just gonna use the average dollar per square, but when you're rehabbing a deal, you know, you you look at okay, what can I push this thing for? And if I can't, you know, if I can't get my price, I can always lower the price. Mm -hmm. okay. Right. If I. If I, you know, if I try to set for 120, I can't set for 120. I can always load for 110, you know, or in worst case in scenario, load to 100,000. But when I'm, but when I'm going in there to buy it, then of course I'm buying it based on the ninety-six thousand dollar price. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, so it's it's it it has a lot. Of, so that's the that's kind of like the bonus, you know, in a rehab transaction. Uh, I always try to look for deals that, you know, that has a high potential that I can push the price for more. Okay. Okay. You know, yeah. I'd rather come in the, you know, I'd rather come in, uh, you know, conservative and then sell on aggressive than try to come in aggressive <laughs> and then lose my shirt when I don't, when it doesn't sell. <laughs> right. right. Uh, yeah. Makes yeah. Sense. It makes sense. Uh -huh. Right. So, so yeah, so you, know, you use the average comps for conservative, you use the high comps for aggressive. Um, and, and like, this is, you know, uh, this is for selling. Okay. And then you use the low comps uh, for, um, uh, I guess, buying and negotiating. Yeah, buy, yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's, that's kind of how it works. Okay. Okay. I, um, Okay, now, you know, what ifs, right? What if you get too many comps? Uh -huh. um, like you have a subdivision where, where um, there's a lot of sections. There's a big subdivision. Uh -huh. You want to narrow down to the, to, to the sections. Um, you know, if you, if, 
uh, nail down to that either that specific let's say let's say you have a subdivision that has 20 different sections and the price range anywhere from you know a hundred thousand to a million dollar home right then, then then typically like let's say your house is, is in section five then chances are section four five and six are probably going to be in the same price range right section one might be in a different price range and section 20 might be a different price range Okay. So you're trying to narrow down to, to your specific section as much as possible. Okay. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then you expand the section out, you know, uh, if you don't get enough comps. Um, narrow into square feet. I always like to find comps within plus or minus 10% of my house. So, okay. So if it's a thousand square feet home, then I want 900 to 1100. Okay. Okay. If it's a two thousand square feet home, I want eighteen hundred to twenty two hundred square feet, right? Okay. So plus or minus ten, yeah, ten percent. Um, you know, once it goes past ten percent, then it gets tricky because now we kind of have to guesstimate it. I see. I've been using twenty five percent. Yeah, that's way too big. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, you, you know, you use that when you don't have any other choice, okay. right? When you don't have any other comps to go by, but, but if you have other comps, then 20%, uh, 20, yeah, 10% is best. 25% is way too, uh, uh, an appraisal would use plus or minus 10%. Okay. So I try to do my comps as close to how an appraiser would do theirs. Yeah, me too. I, I just heard an appraiser say something like 20 to 25. So I started using it. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. If they're saying that, 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 that means that like they're having a really hard time finding comps. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Um, and then narrow down to year built plus or minus, you know, 10 years is ideal in older homes. It really doesn't matter. Like a one that's built in 1930 versus one that built in 1960 really doesn't matter. Okay. Okay. Right? But, but when you get to like one that built in 19, uh, 80 versus one that built in 2000 makes a big difference. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, to an appraiser though, like the difference is, is not that much. So if an appraiser can't find comps, the way the appraiser do it is they always go based on square feet first. Like that's more important to them than year built. So if, 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 if you have a property that the square feet, let's say it's 2000 square feet, and, um, and, and there's no other comps near that, they'll go to a newer home, you know, and adjust the price accordingly if the newer home has a, uh, the same, a similar square feet. Uh -huh. then, 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 then they would stick with an older home and, and expand their square feet. Mm -hmm. uh, and, th and this would be where I differ from an appraiser. I would, you know, um, when I'm buying, and there's always the difference between when you're buying versus when you're selling. When I'm buying, I would stick with the year built and go, go to a, 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 a bigger square feet, okay. a smaller square feet, go a wider range in square feet, stick with the year built. Uh, and then when I'm selling, I would stick with the, year, uh, with the square feet and expand the year built. Oh. Like what, whatever's in my favor. <laughs> oh, right, right. right. Uh, cause yeah, like I, you know, I know that, I know that an appraiser would, would, would take a similar square footage home for, uh, you know, let's say my house is 1980. They'll, they'll take a similar square feet home and go to a house that was built in 2010. Then they would to go to one that's too different in, in square footage. I see. Mm -hmm. You know? So yeah. So like, so, so. So when I'm, when I'm buying, you know, I try to be conservative in my way as much as possible. And then when I'm selling, you know, I try to be more aggressive based on what I think you were appraised for. Okay, got it. Um, all right. Now, what about when you get too few comps, right? Um, you know, expanding the sold date uh, from uh, six months out to a year. Uh, would be one way. Sometimes I'll go even two years if I just like can't find anything. Right. Um, you know, but uh, typically, you know, a, a year. Uh, removing 
you know, the, some of the search criteria, like the square feet and year built so you can get bigger. Um, and then, uh, you know, doing a map search, like, so removing the subdivision completely right. and just do a map search. Okay. Uh -huh. um, if I get no comps at all, um, I will look at the free comps. Okay. Um, uh, and, 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 and use that, um, like, you know. Um, Appraisal, I've never heard of that. Uh, the rest of the all oh, chase, I've never heard of that one, but I love home snap and realtor.com. Yeah. Um, so they all, all of these have a different formula that they use, um, you know, but that, I mean, plus or minus 10% difference is very common with them. Um, so, so, so I, you know, I like if I have to show to a buyer, uh, what it, you know, then I'll just use the average. I'll just say, look, I, right, here's, here's what these websites, um, says, and here's the average between them. So I think the value is this amount. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, you know, uh, what I, I notice like whenever the, these websites don't have, um, don't have comps that they can use either, they'll, you know, they'll, they'll rely more on the tax appraised value. Oh. So that, that will bring down the value of the property. Right. Okay. A lot of times, you know, our, our houses are worth more than the, the tax appraised value. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, um, Cool. So, um, do you have any questions so far here? Uh, no, no, that's pretty cut straight. I, uh, I have a, a good, uh, I guess, background in comp. So this just kind of uh, just reiterates it and, and make and clarifies some of the. Yeah. Some, yeah. Is there is there anything else that I've mentioned that you do differently? Uh, no, uh, except the ten percent and. Uh, if there's no comps at the bottom, yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, no, it's the 10% really is, uh, is that. And then, uh, all, oh, and when you just depending on, uh, uh, I guess being aggressive and conservative on your price per square foot, uh, mm -hmm. just your formula with that, uh, is a little different. So it's helpful in that way because i've experienced where there's homes like you say your home is way bigger than any of the other homes so one neighborhood if there's a, there's a ceiling that 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 neighborhood will allow so you can't really push that ceiling and then vice versa where yours is smaller and you could perhaps add some value once it's retail because that neighborhood allows you to sell for more, uh, you know. So that that was insightful because uh, I've run up against that a couple times. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, you know, comps is not always straightforward, right? As you know, <laughs> you know, a lot of it is just guessing. Um, right. Right. It is. You know. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, cool. Do you have a specific property that you want me to take a look at? To, uh, I guess, run like comps on? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, perhaps. I've sent out a, a, a contract. The seller hasn't contacted me back, but we can use this property as a example to, um, you know, run comps. Okay. Um, and then I have another one that I found that is vacant and I'm really trying to find the owner. I've skip traced them, but they're not answering their phone call. Gotcha. All right. Um, or the one that I'm telling you with the, uh, it's a one, one and I got it under contract for one thirty five, and it's a ARV. Yeah. That's the one I want you to, okay. uh, what, yeah. what's your, what is your, um, oh, uh, let me see. I'm going to need to log in real quick. Okay. 
What's your login again? Uh, D991825. Uh, and the password is kind of, it's personalized. It's the number one, uh, capital W, B, lowercase b, the at sign, R, the number one, D, T. Yeah, and then um, once you know, one thing I didn't make a note. Once I run comps, um, I'll use the Google Map. Why is it? Switch. Are you still there? Yes, I'm still here. I um, once I um, run comps, I will also use um, a Google Map to uh, drive uh, the comp so I don't have to actually like physically drive, you know, like it used to be where I would print the comps, you know, before I go on the appointment, I'll go there early and I'll drive the comps, right? Uh, Nowadays, I'll just use the Google uh, Street Views to drive the comps, after, you know, after we, we run the comps, uh, 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 you know, so. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'll make, um, Let me let me make you know five point five here. Um, so it's a you know it's a good practice, especially if it's a deal that like you're getting close. Obviously, if it's you know the deal is not getting close, you don't need to do all that, right? Right, right. Uh -huh. But if it's close, you you want to do that. Um, all right. Still loading. There we go. There it is. What the, what's the address? It's two one nine. Uh, South Oak Cliff Boulevard. So that's, uh, yeah, South Oak uh -huh, Cliff. And then uh, it's is, a boulevard. Is South spelled out or just an S, do you know? I think it's an S, just an S. Um, it's a boulevard. Okay. So it can't find it. So we're going to click on this. Ooh. The um, this real listing, <laughs> they uh, they block out the Philippines or something. My VAs can never access this uh, website. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So uh, so 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 for my VAs, they um, they just have to use the uh, the county uh, website directly. So like in in Harris County, it'll be like HCAD. Okay. Okay. I see. Uh, Patricia at the top, uh huh. Three bedroom, one bath. Now they say it's a three bed, but when you go inside, it's a one bed. It, it has been redone on the inside they knocked out a wall and they put closets in because the old the lady the house was built for her because she was declining in health and so it's a real weird built house right so i i, I would still advertise it like when you're wholesaling uh -huh. uh, advertise it as a three bed and tell them that um you know this the seller had um had uh, move some walls, so they would have to put those walls back for it to be three beds again. Okay, okay, it's that's not something I didn't know. Yeah. So, yeah, because if you if you put it as a one bed, a lot of people are gonna shy away from that. I know. I, I did that, and <laughs> it, it did it affected me. Yeah. Um. 
So look, the, the, the automated estimate value on it is uh, 221. Um, and that's the automated. Um, from real list from this company. Uh-huh, AVM is. Uh, automated value. Uh, metric, metric, something like that. Yeah. yeah, okay, all right, yeah. Yeah, Core Logic is the same company as um, like Real uh, Real Quest, um, uh -huh. and um, yeah, and um, uh, I I believe their first American title is the um, is the parent company. Okay, right. so they got it at two twenty one. Okay. Yeah, let's see here. Um, all right, so tax appraised value is cheap though, only sixty, uh, only one hundred and five thousand. Uh, okay, all right. So let's go back here. Right, so we're gonna go to um, search quick. Yeah, that's how mine looks. Yeah, you guys have more status than we do. You even have coming soon, active contingent, active kicked out. That's cool. We don't have all of that. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Um, that's, yeah. So pending 90 days. Hmm, interesting. All right. Uh, this is my first time logging into the. Oh, yeah. No, this is how mine is set. Oh, now, now it makes sense. Yeah, this is. So this is how it's, I automatically have it set up for expired, pending, sold, and actives uh, within the 180 days, pending 90, expired 90. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Let's see. 13 matches. Okay. The code are we in here? Uh, 75208. Seven, All right, cool. All right. Subdivision is good. Sort of. Um, all right. We have. Yeah. Did you custom this view or is this a default view? No, I customized it. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So you have 1,400 square feet, 13. So this is this one is closest to ours here. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Uh, let's uh -huh. search for 169. And then probably, oh. It's nice. Yeah. Uh, nice well, on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> the, um, inside can use some, up, you know, updating. Yeah, right. But it's nice for the most part. Okay. Uh -huh. um, so, so I would feel very comfortable with that comp. Uh, okay, now let's look at. Yeah, and, and if you notice, like, the, the price is about very similar. So dollar per square, um, yeah, dollar per square on that one will be different. Um, you don't, you don't, how come you don't have a dollar per square foot sold on here? Um, I don't know if that's available. I have to go down, I have to look. You can, what you can do is uh, you can push your, um, Right at where it says, all right, put your thing right by, uh, come down, all right, go to address, all right, and hover over address. Address? Okay. But in the gray part, yeah, in the gray part, in the gray area of address, no, 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 come back up to address, and then right there, click that. Now, you can insert column, and then 
Uh, we can see, you can type price per square foot, whatever that is, how, whatever that looks like, square foot. Uh, and then it may be able to tell us. Um, I'm looking for sold per square foot. Hmm. So yeah, I guess I have something over there. That's square price by lot size. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. Yeah. Me, okay, we'll, we'll look. Um, all right, so I'll put these. This one is really out of the, all right. Um, so what's gonna be helpful for your customization here is uh, to add in the year and add in the, the dollar per square foot sold. Okay. Because right. right now I can't compare like what year it was built. Because what see. if this is a newer home? See how it sold for a lot more? Okay. Okay. I see. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So now it's an older home. Yeah, but they yeah they really, they upgraded it a lot. Yeah, they did. And majority that's how the majority of the newer homes are looking. They're doing. I mean, they're they're taking the older homes built back in the nineteen twenties and doing them like that. Yeah. So, so, so you, this particular house has tons of potential for uh, doing um, uh, additions, like uh, yeah. expanding the square feet. Yes, exactly. Uh, I did a deal in this exact neighborhood on a street called Waverly. Actually, there's a Waverly at the top of the list, the third one from the bottom. I mean, third one from the top. I did a, a house on Waverly, and what they did is made the addition. Yeah. So that house is on the exact same street. Uh, this is not mine, but mine is going to be up for sale pretty soon. And they made uh, an extra master suite. Uh, they put uh, a master bath, master closet, a half bath, and they made an upstairs like game area. So this neighborhood, that's exactly what I sent out to my buyers list. I said, with an addition, you can get the 300, um, you can get your higher comps, your 340 to three, you know, 320. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. I, uh, let me see here. These got, these got Kim sold. Um, yeah, it's uh so 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 in a case like this where it varies quite a bit, you know, uh, if I didn't know the the neighborhood, I would definitely drive it um, and see like I I bet the price north of Twelfth Street is probably different from south of Twelfth Street. Yeah, it is. So north. The 12th Street uh, is an area called Winneka Heights, mm -hmm. and uh, that's historic and it's you know pretty pricey. Um, yeah, Winneka Heights, as you see it. Uh -huh. okay. So what what does it look like you're gonna get this contract for? I've already got it. It's the one I was explaining where they want to bag out. Oh, gotcha. Oh yeah, you got it dirt cheap, dude. <laughs> that's for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. So I, I, so I don't know if you noticed what I did with the map. Uh huh. I saw uh, that. Yeah. So I just picked the one north of South Twelfth uh, Street. Okay. Um, do you know if there's any difference if you go east of uh, South Oak, Oak Cliff versus the um, west? Uh yeah. If you go east, um. Or oh, if you continue to go east, uh, the prices gets higher uh, because that's where the city, where I told you the city's dumping the money at. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you go west, the price declines, but not by much. It's still a good, there's still good deals uh, going that way. Right. Uh, so that general area, just in general, is a good area just because of what the city's doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is definitely a good area to farm in for sure. Yeah, this is one of my farm areas. I actually try to have bird dogs like 
doing everything, passing out flyers, driving for dollars. Right. Okay. Uh, All right. Um, and like I say, I have another one in this exact neighborhood I found already, but I haven't con- I haven't been able to contact the owner yet. Right. Um, do you know if the if your house the condition is um, how, well? How is the condition of the, the property as it is right now? Uh, structurally, it's great. It doesn't need any work structurally. Uh, on the inside. I mean, the house is in great condition. It was rebuilt in 2001, Tim. Uh, it has a cat living in it, so it's very, it, it stinks. Uh, then they, it seems like they turned it into like a storage. This house right here, Tim, oh man, I should have had this house. I was there like a week after the lady passed away. I talked to the neighbor. And she's like, yeah, the niece, the niece is going to sell it. And I could never get a hold of the niece. And she finally sold it. Now it's on the MLS. This is like uh, six or eight months ago. Wow. Yeah, now it's sold already. So this is gonna be a big rehab. This is a major street. This is a good, good house. They're gonna turn it into something nice. Gotcha, okay. Uh, but yeah, my house is structurally sound. It's great, no foundation, no anything. Only thing, uh, it's just built very weird. Big bathroom right in the center of the house. Uh, one bed, uh, a lot of dead space with closets and stuff like that. But when it comes to structurally, uh, I can show you pictures once we, uh, I'll share my screen or whatever. Okay. And, uh, All right, I'll but, switch over to you. But, <laughs> I, you know, I would say, um, you know, I, 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 would, I would use um, these low cups here uh-huh. to, to talk sense into the seller. I said, okay. look, these houses are bigger than yours. They're in better condition. Um, and they were only sold for this much, you know. I mean, you know, f- um, so, so if, if you were to put in the money and fix it up, um, you know, like, yeah, like some of these houses here, you know, then, yeah, you probably can sell it for, for that much. Um, so, so the price that I'm giving you is a fair price given the condition that it is in. You know, the, the houses that are selling in the 200, they're very upgraded, they're, you know, they're newly remodeled, um, you know, a lot of times new roof, new electrical, new plumbing, you know, I mean, like to, to turn your house into something like that, you know, I would have to put in over $100,000 to do that. Right. You know, so 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 I would yeah, I would try to talk some sense into to them uh, that way. Okay. okay. And um, yeah, you know, I mean, like, it, yeah. So like this one has some pictures, or uh, this comp didn't have pictures at all. Mm-hmm. Um. So that is. So yeah, so I I would use. I think this this is a good one to use as a comparison. Okay. Okay. You know, this is a cute little house. Uh, it's similar square footage to theirs, but it's it's much nicer than 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 the one you have. So. So yeah, use that. All right, I'm gonna turn the screen over to you. Let me switch out. Okay. Okay. Um, can I? What do I do? I uh, share screen. Okay. Yes, uh, share screen. Uh, can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see your screen. All right. First, I'll go to some pictures of the property. They let you just kind of look at it real quickly. Um, uh, let's see. All right, so uh, here's the here's the home. Um, That's not a great picture, but we got the better. Here's one, and so as you can see, this is how I found it with the grass and all of that. My bird dog came back and was like, "I think I found one." It's like, okay. Um, 
So small, as you can see, it's not like any of the other homes. Uh, directly to the right and the left, both of those homes are still uh, homes built from 1920. Um, and so that's the front. Uh, that's th this. This is one of the only streets in this in the city, kind of built like this, where it has two. It's a uh, it's two sh sections of the street. One the side that you're seeing and then the side that I'm standing on is the other side. So you can go down one side and go up the other side. It's a boulevard. I don't know if any other streets made like that. And that's why the value, this is the back of the house. Um, all right, so this is the inside. This is, you walk right in the front door. I'm at the front door and I just immediately look to the left and take a picture. Uh, this is what they call like the dining area or whatever. Um, this is immediately looking to the right. This is like your living room or whatever. Now that closet door that you see, that's part of this dead space. That's a big closet right there. There's another closet on the side of that. And uh, it's a lot of dead space. Okay, this right here is in the room. This is in the master uh, room where the wall was knocked out. This is the back half of the uh, where this could have been room number two, but it's a full room. Right. And this is the master. This is how it looks um, uh, from walking in the door, walking in the door of the master. Uh, I took a picture of this because three lots over is this right here, uh, which is a multifamily eight plex. Okay. And they've had several multifamilies. This is the kitchen. <clears throat> um, as you can see, it's like a little order house or something. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, wait, what happened? So, yeah, that's the kitchen. Uh, yeah, that's how the kitchen looks right there. So, uh, it's not bad, like I say. This is the hallway. Um, all of this, this wall to the right, that's the dead space. This is just closets and dead space. All right. Uh, this is the inside of the bathroom. Uh, you know, so it's actually in pretty good shape. That's the master bedroom. So that's that with that property right there. Um, and so now if I go to, um, So let's see here. Now, what was I supposed? I was showing you that property, and what else was I doing? Um, yeah, well, you, yeah, well, you're just showing me the condition of the property. Um, oh, okay. But um, but yeah, it you know, and and I think that so so number one, explain to her to her these things, and then number two. You know, maybe if you have to, you know, go up on the price a little bit, um, definitely not to 200 that she wants, right? So I'll, you know, I'll buy for 200 if you're willing to fix it up to these conditions. <laughs> but, right. you know, uh, and then I think partnering up with her is the, you know, the other option. So yeah, there's, there's plenty of ways that you can still keep this deal, you know, al uh, yeah, uh, alive and make it work for, for her. Okay, okay. All right. <clears throat> so, all right. So yeah. So we'll um we'll wrap this up. Let me um find you the documents that I need to send you, um you know, and do that before I head to my next appointment. Um, do you have any qu other questions for me for now? Um, one thing I want to do say is a, a, my about Ashley, um, mm -hmm. um and getting her over to freedom soft instead of manually doing it one at a time uh, mm -hmm. so that we could uh, right. uh, not spend much time on texting those landlord buyers. Right. Um, then, um, you know, I would like to ask, 
at where we're at now in this stage with whatever Ashley's been doing, what I've been doing, trying to learn Freedom Soft, learn all of these other little uh, things that I've come that's new to me. Uh, what would you do if you were me? Well, you know, we would stay on schedule in the sense of um, what's, you know, what, here, let me take, let me take the screen back. Okay. Uh, Stop sharing. Go ahead. All right, cool. Um, you know, we'll, we'll stay, still stay in schedule. We'll, 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 we're behind on schedule, but we'll stay on sort of the pattern. Okay. Right. So, um, so, so Ashley still needs to finish up her hundred um, landlords. Right. Um, you still need to contact the wholesalers, um, and then um, your know, next is uh, moving on to doing MLS offers. Okay. okay. Um, so, 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 so we're still going down this list. Like our weeks are off, right? Okay. But we're okay. still going down this list, and so. Um, you know, by, um, yeah, um, for Ashley, you know, you should have her continue to, to compile the list and then on Friday, you know, do the text blast out. Okay. Um, okay. And, um, yeah, and so, so by then, hope, you know, she should have her 100. Have you, uh, have you started, she, um, have you started sending out deals to, to the people that she have found so far? Uh, yes, I sent out this old clip deal that I just showed you. Okay. Some yeah. of the people, yes. Uh -huh. All right. Um, yeah, so we'll do that. Um, and then, um, you know, once, um, yeah, one, once that's done, then we'll move on to uh, uh, the, you know, like the, the next one. So we're still going down this list, basically. Okay. Okay. Okay, great. All right. Well, yeah, that just gives me clarity. It makes me kind of refocus again. I need to get more of these wholesalers on the phone. And then I need to tell Ashley to, um, for the remainder of the week, just compile the list. And then on Friday, we'll send a text back. Because I think what she's been doing, <clears throat> it's kind of doing a little of both, um, where she compiles and then she texts. And I think like for majority of the day, she might've just done nothing but text. Or that was yesterday. And today she might've did nothing but compiling. So. I guess I'll, I'll just express to her, excuse me, I'll just express to her that uh, compile the list the rest of the week, just continue to load, fill the database up, and then we'll send a text blast. All right. Okay, okay. Got yeah. it. All right. All right. So, yeah, so we'll, we'll uh, yeah, so we'll keep on at that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and anything you need in between to shoot me a text, let me know. Okay. Um, you know, so I can support you in between, um, and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Great. I, I really appreciate it, Tim. All right. You're welcome, buddy. Sounds good. All right. Well, have fun. I'll talk to you later. You too. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye. <clears throat>